Want to see more cool videos on our channel? We do, so press this bell and enable to send notifications. Owning skyscrapers is the new in thing. Being on the top lists of the world's tallest skyscrapers is a title that many are chasing after from developers to architects and also investors all over the world. Since we discovered industrialization centuries ago and got into the business of building and construction, it's been a race to the top, literally. The tallest buildings come up and someone else adds just a few inches and steals the title. Is it healthy competition? If it's improving the quality of buildings, hell yeah. Taller and taller buildings have come into existence in recent years, and investors are not scared to spend money on these iconic buildings. Some of the investors argue that these chic, classy buildings are a great return on investment. It's happening in corporate America, in the United Arab Emirates, tourist destinations, as well as the emerging economies of Africa. There is, however, a little-known secret that lies within these tall buildings. Some of them are not as tall as they may have us believe. The trick is in the fact that some of these tall buildings have additional towers or spires that add a few inches to the skyscrapers and inch out a good segment to the competition. A few inches are surely normal, but some of the towers and spires are over 100 meters in length. Even for aesthetics, that's too much. This discovery is backed up by data from the Council of Tall Buildings and the Urban Habitat, or CTBUH. They did a bit of research on the tallest buildings and found some data worth mulling over. Turns out that a whopping 60% of the tall buildings are not really that tall. These buildings tend to add the aforementioned spires and towers on a whim. These findings were quite an eye-opener, and the height of most buildings is exaggerated. The engineering is not as complex as you would imagine, since the buildings are not as tall. Faking how tall the building is is just a gimmick to get some awards. This vanity height problem has been there for quite a long time, and more than half of the world's tallest buildings are guilty. Let's talk about the mighty Burj Khalifa. This building is currently holding the title of the tallest building in the world. It has done so for a number of years now. It's attracted millions of visitors the world over. It was constructed a decade ago in 2010 and is still a tourist attraction for anyone who shows up in the luxurious city of Dubai. It has 154 floors for occupancy and 9 extra ones for maintenance. To navigate around and about this monster of a building, you need the 57 elevators that are available at your service. Do note that there's a fee to go up this building. Money has to be made. Now, let's do a tallness check. The building is 828 meters tall to the top of the spire. That said, the highest floor stands at 585 meters. This means that we have 244 meters that are not accounted for, which is 29% of the building. Is that a hoax or what? Let's cross over to the United States of America. The Bank of America Tower is also another one of a kind, an historical building that's been there for almost seven decades. It's located at the heart of Manhattan in New York City. It's fettered to be an ecologically friendly skyscraper and takes the fifth spot in the list of the tallest buildings in New York. This one stands at 366 meters, and again the floors stop at 235 meters. This too means that 131 meters are vanity height, and that's 30% of the entire building. It has 55 stories and is a busy business hub. It got an award for the best tall building from the CTBUH in 2010, but we suspect it's mostly because of ecological reasons. The building qualifies to be a green building thanks to its efforts at water conservation, energy conservation, and environmental quality. We're getting warmer. There are a few buildings that have done far worse. Check out the Burj Al Arab, which is at 320 meters high and is today the world's tallest hotel. Let's not argue about aesthetics. Yes, the building strikes a great balance between architecture and construction design. Its structure looks like the sail of a ship. It also has a helipad at the top to boot. The problem, however, is at the top there's a whole lot of nothingness that comes into about 124 meters. This is 39% of the entire structure. That said, the Burj Al Arab Hotel smells of money and opulence and has secured a seven-star rating, which only a few establishments can take pride in scoring. The Emirates Towers, which are 242 meters, have 113 of its height as fluff, and that's 32%. The two towers, Office Tower and Hotel Tower, interestingly, have the same number of floors. The two towers are connected by a two-way retail complex known as the Boulevard. 
The place has over 42 acres of gardens with lakes, waterfalls and a public seating area. What about parking, you ask? The place has space for at least 1,500 cars. The Zifeng Tower is 450 meters high and 133 meters of vanity height can't be accounted for, and this makes the building really just 317 meters. The vanity height is 32% of the building. This one is the sixth tallest in China and 20th in the world. The Chrysler Building has 21% vanity height and the Empire State Building also has 2% vanity height. These are some of the oldest buildings around. The Chrysler Building takes pride in its artistic flair. The car corporation for sure had to match its standards of the building to their fancy cars. The building is the work of Walter Chrysler of the Chrysler Corporation. It might not be the tallest there is, but it's the tallest where buildings fortified in nothing but steel are concerned. Although the building has received some criticisms over the years, it still stands as a megastructure to reckon with. The Citic Tower, also known as China Zun, is 527 meters in height and has 109 floors and 101 elevators to boot. The shape of the building was inspired by the ancient Chinese Zun, which is a ritual vessel. It has a vanity height of 24%. In 2018, there was a bit of controversy looming about the building. It was suspected that the top three floors of the building were being used as a base for surveillance. We cannot substantiate that information. All we know is that the Chinese are really good at keeping an eye on their people. Is that a good or a bad thing? We genuinely wouldn't know. The One World Trade Center replaced the Twin Towers that were destroyed by the 9-11 terror attack. The cubic base that housed the Twin Towers was however retained and stands as a sign of resilience and strength. The height is 541 meters and the building occupies 104 floors. The building has a vanity height of 1%, which is almost negligible. Slow claps for the One World Trade Center. The Shard in London. This is a 95-story building. It's the tallest building in the United Kingdom. It stands at 309 meters at its highest point and barely has any vanity height, just like the One World Trade Center. From a distance, this building looks like it's ready to pierce the sky. It's designed as a spire-like structure that's emerging from the River Thames. It's an energy efficiency building and has been designed to withstand the most adverse of conditions. The industrial city of Seoul houses the Lot World Tower, which stands at 555 meters and occupies 123 floors and the top floor ends at 497 meters, giving it a vanity height of 58 meters. This isn't too bad compared to its counterparts. This building is a landmark for Seoul and its exterior pale colored glass pays homage to Korean ceramics as well as a special metal known as filigree. It's the absolute place to showcase a fireworks show. The tower is all about business from retail, office space, apartments and a hotel. It prides itself on having a concert hall and a cafe at the building's rooftop. The Makar Royal Clock Tower at the heart of Mecca in Saudi Arabia. It's also known as the Alba al Bayit, which means the Towers of the House. This iconic building is owned by the government and it has seven exclusive skyscraper hotels. With 601 meters and 120 floors, it's a sight to behold for the Muslim faithful who visit the city during their harsh journey. It's next to the Grand Mosque. Clocks are apparently the largest and the highest in the world and they make the calculation for the vanity height a little redundant since the clocks are the main aesthetics of the building. The highest residential floor stands at 370 meters. The roof of the clocks is 450 meters. There's a 151 meter tall spire that's also been added to the top of the clock. There is also at the base of the spire a glass covered floor, which is a scientific center for seeing the moon at the beginning of the Islamic months. This is also the base for the controls of the atomic tower clocks. The Shanghai Tower is mesmerizing with its twists and spirals. The shape, however, is such that it helps the building withstand the strong winds. That said, it still has that mesmerizing effect that invites you to go up the magnificent architectural work of art. The top floor stands at 587 meters, while the tip is 632 meters. A few fun facts about this building has the largest observation deck. The sightseeing deck is on the 118th floor and is free to the public. If you're ever in Shanghai, do check it out. The world is, however, waiting with bated breath for the Jeddah Tower, which will be the tallest building yet, whose tower and spire will be at the highest points in the sky. It's estimated it will be 1,000 meters tall. 
It was built in the 1930s, by then the competition had already started, albeit at a smaller scale, and by the 21st century it had escalated. The rise and rise of super-tall buildings goes to show that humanity has a lot to offer, both now and in the future. When it comes to the vanity height, who's to blame for this small anomaly? Is it the architects, engineers, or is it the investors? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy the video, please let me know by clicking the like button. Do share, write a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so that you can catch up my next video.